There is a video that a lot of people have been sharing in my Discord. I kept getting notifications over and over and over to review this thing before it gets taken down. On September the 13th of this year, The Verge published a video on YouTube. This is a notoriously bad video, apparently. I haven't watched it yet. Apparently, it was like a total fucking shit show. How we built $2,000 gaming PC. But I've been told it is extremely bad and it's full of things that you just shouldn't do when building a gaming PC. At first, I admit, I thought it was satire. So a few years ago, TC or managing editor- Hi Stefan, you probably desktop. shouldn't have included your Twitter handle here because I imagine you're just gonna get absolutely flamed from the internet. You can build a gaming desktop for around a thousand dollars. Which is true. Well, I, I... Yeah, you can build a gaming desktop for around $1,000 or $350 or $250 or $200 or $175 or $150 or sometimes even a hundred dollars, but yeah, sure, a thousand dollars. I want to go all out, so I spent around two thousand. Two thousand is a like decent chunk of change for a gaming PC. Games. So, what do you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table, preferably not metal. Hold on, time out. Time, time out. <laughs> so, what do you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table. <laughs> first you need a table. Preferably not- oh, you need a table to build a PC! I thought you could build it in mid-air! You cannot build this on the floor! So step one, you need a table. Step two, you better have two hands. And they better have ten digits. Like, that's just common sense that you're gonna need a sur working surface area to build a computer. That's just- Why even say that? Have an anti-static working surface layered on top of it. A thermal paste applicator. And- what? A thermal paste applicator? What the heck is that? Does anybody ever actually use a thermal paste applicator? An Allen wrench. Why is he recommending an Allen wrench? I have never used an Allen wrench to build a computer ever, and I've built about 30 computers now. Unless he used that Allen wrench to put together the table. Some tweezers to tie up the wires. Hold on, did he just say tweezers? Those are zip ties. How in God's name is my English better than his? Ooh. This, this is not turning out good already. <laughs> a Swiss Army knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. A Swiss Army knife that hopefully, hopefully, has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. No. Wouldn't you make sure that you have the tools necessary before you start the build? This is a sponsored video. Why does your office with so many dozen PCs and so many dozen tech employees not have one of these? And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you okay, that's and true. the parts. These are the parts you're going to need. But more importantly, before we get... Hold on. That's not an anti-static bracelet at all. There's no ground wire coming off of it. He's not connected to anything. That looks like the bracelet I'm wearing. What? It's not a wireless wristband. That's a rib strong bracelet. He's not fighting static. He's fighting cancer. That's not going to work at all. <laughs> don't, don't listen to this person. This is really bad so far. We have a lot of boxes and a lot of PC parts. So it's best you unbox them, isolate the parts that you really need. So it's best you unbox them, isolate the parts that you- ah, Why did he destroy the box? Dude, you have a knife right there, man. That wasn't so hard, was it? And screw in with confidence, but also don't screw in too hard, otherwise you- Screw in with confidence. I like his style. Oh, at least he put the posts in. He didn't tell- it's a tutorial. They didn't tell you to put the posts in, but luckily he already did it and you just have to figure it out on your own. I chose Asus Z370. Asus Z? Asus Z? A Asus? Asus? For two main reasons. One, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and also it has- <sighs> Don't buy a motherboard just because it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And also it has support for NVMe SSDs, meaning you can get really- Okay, I want to stop it there because why is he installing the motherboard straight into the chassis? I'd install as much as I physically could onto the motherboard first. So you're talking the processor, thermal paste, cooler if it will allow it. Obviously if you're using an AIO, it's a different story or custom loop. But if it's an air cooler, you can bolt that on there. M.2 um, drive, so that could be SATA raw, NVMe, um, and memory as well. So basically try and build as much as you can onto the motherboard. So when you do transfer it to the case, it's just generally easier. Attention to the brace that goes at the, the brace, that the brace, that go the brace, the brace, that the brace, the brace, the brace, the brace, the, 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 the brace that goes at the back the brace? of the brace. Oh my. 
Did he seriously just call an IO shield plate a brace? You always have to make sure that you really hammer it in because there's no screw. Do not hammer it in. <laughs> Please do not hammer it. Why did he say hammer it in? Secondly, uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz. <laughs> That's not that fast for DDR4 memory. That is very, very slow. 2666 is not that fast. I can run at 3200 megahertz. That would be classified as really fast on DDR3, but for DDR4, not so much. Okay, I don't know why he's opening all four DIMM slots. He only has two sticks of RAM. He's putting this in wrong already. There's the little notch right there, and there is the hole. You could tell right now this is not lined up. He's already putting it in upside down. He's not gonna be able to snap this in. And just lining that up with the load. Oh, they cut away. So once you hear that... They cut away, because he was putting it in wrong. So once you hear that solid clasp, and you don't see... You mean click? It's not a clasp. Now he's in slot four. Who edited this? I mean, I tell you, I'm I'm definitely editing my video down so I don't sound stupid. Step three, we're going to install... Hold on. What is that? Hold up. What is, what is this right here? What do you guys see wrong? He installed the memory incorrect. Oh no, he installed the memory wrong. It be side by side. They should be spaced out for that motherboard. I look at the manual. That's the wrong way. So rip dual channel support on his motherboard if he's going to run his RAM like that. That is only going to read 8 gigs. That's not going to read 16 because one of them is installed incorrectly. Speaking of the memory, I wish I could erase this one. But you can always upgrade this and swap it out and it's only held down by one screw and the latch. So it's really simple. Okay, so he mentions it's only held down by a screw and a latch, but then looking at it, he hasn't actually put the stand off. And it looks like he's screwing the NVMe drive directly onto the motherboard. So generally you'd get these with your motherboard, which is a tiny little standoff and a little screw that just kind of brings up the M.2 drive so that it's in line. He's screwing it down onto the motherboard like, oh. Is this computer even gonna work? Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system. I'm just going to pick the top one. Absolutely wrong! He's absolutely wrong there. Obviously, you pick the top one because that one has the most bandwidth. I'm just going to pick the top one because the SSD is at the bottom and I don't want to cover it. I just think it looks nice. Make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads. So the they're not insulating pads, they're anti-vibration pads. What are you insulating against? So the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. What? So Whoa, hold the f***ing phone. That is so dumb. You are actually an idiot. I'm going, I've had enough. So we have a 120 volt outlet and then we have our power supply. Oh no. 120 volts, I'm touching the case. There's 120 volts going through my body right now. But what happens if we take that nice little thing? Nothing. Because if we go into continuity, it's grounded. It's almost as if the people developing electrical standards knew what the heck they were doing. It's a good thing he has, what would Jesus do bracelet on? Or he'd be really screwed. So just take it in. Slide it in nice and easy until what? you have a snug fit, and then shift it what? to the back and make sure it's right up against the front. What's wrong here? Oh my god, he's putting the fan towards the back of the case. He's gonna suffocate airflow on it. Oh no. If you want this PC to actually last and not burn itself the fuck up, this is potentially a fire hazard. You should never do that. Never, ever, like, block the fan. What the case is designed for is that the power supply should be phasing outward or the fan should be phasing outward so it could pull air in. This guy's gonna be replacing the power supply in a few months and he's gonna be like, holy crap, why is this thing dead already? Always be sure to try to play- Hold on! I can see through this. I can see the table through the fins of the radiator he does not have fans on that why are there no fans on the radiator so he's just gonna fry his cpu too he also doesn't have the plastic cover on this that has thermal paste on it if that thing happens to tilt or anything else he's just gonna smear thermal paste everywhere possibly get it dirty there's nothing special about this screwing in process they're just really long screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler and they take forever. You know why they're really long screws is because you're supposed to put the fans on and then screw the fans on with those screws. That's why they're long. Because the fans are this thick and the, uh, the screws go through the fans into the radiator to mount them to the radiator. He should use the small one. He's going to drill holes into the heat sink of the radiator. And that fluid's going to go everywhere. Okay, he's probably broken his 
All in one now. I, I doubt this PC is going to last very long. My family in China who made this product cringing so hard right now. Every power supply is going to come with a big bag of Velcro cables. Okay, every power supply is going to come with a big bag of cables. It's not going to, not every power supply, because not every power supply is modular. You have modular power supplies, semi-modular, and then just normal straight cables. So that's a bit of a misleading statement. Typically, you want to put the cables in the power supply first. Some cases, very difficult to put it in after the fact. Oh Computer dear. Brain, Considering you fucked up everything so, so far, I have no faith in you putting the CPU properly in its socket. Why the hell is the CPU not installed at this point? A Core i7 Hexacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one, and it's an 8th generation chip. Yeah, and we got one. Super exclusive. You can only buy it on every major retailer in the world. And it supports overclocking. So what I swear to God, you better not overclock it. Does, we're just gonna take this little plastic part out. We'll just toss that out of here. No, don't do that. And no, no, you need that. What the heck did he just do? And he goes like, last Jedi level. Motherboard manufacturers actually require you to have that metal, not metal, the plastic cover for the socket, the CPU socket. If you plan on RMAing that motherboard, if there's a problem with it and you plan on sending it back to the manufacturer to get fixed, they need that plastic cover. They will not accept an RMA process or request if you don't have that cover. So don't throw that away. Always keep that. And also you do not just pull it out of the socket. It pops out after you put your CPU in, which you would know if you would have already put your CPU in before all of this garbage that you did on your case. And we're going to use the CPU applicator. This is a special is that? part that I've never seen that. Get, but this motherboard I have never seen that in my life. What the fuck is a CPU applicator? I have never seen a bracket for the CPU to be held on so you can install it properly. It's called a CPU installation tool. It makes it really You don't need free. that. So what having this little installer does for you is it's basically a brace that you can apply. Yeah, you don't right need to that. And this will make it easier you, for us to apply. It to you don't. You don't need and that. And make sure that everything lines up, and we're gonna clasp down on it, and we'll be good. To the holders right here. You took the and tool we'll off and you threw it to it the side. Why did he spend all that time talking to us about that CPU holder thingy if he didn't even use it? He knows he didn't need it. Now we can't delete everything he said because the editor is someone else other than him. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. Why are we about to apply a thermal paste to the CPU? I'm looking in the AIO, like typically AIOs come with like a thermal, uh, a small amount of thermal paste already pre-applied. Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already neatly applied. And it's not every CPU cooler. It's good, essentially PC building practice to have a little bit extra no. and layer it on top oh, of the no. CPU. No, 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 no. What he do? It's a CPU. You're not icing a cake. <laughs> <laughs> By the looks of it, where I've paused, he looks like he's adding more thermal paste to the CPU and then he's going to put what's already on the cooler on top, which that's a big no-no. Don't do that. That's awful. What you should do is use a pea-sized drop of thermal paste in the middle of the IHS, which is that like metal square on the CPU. Integrated heat spreader, as it's called. That's more than enough, is a pea-sized blob of thermal paste in the middle. Once you make the contact with the CPU cooler, that will actually spread out when you go to put pressure from the cooler on top of the CPU. So don't do this. If they left this PC as is, it would probably be dead in a week. So you're gonna see that there Oh are my four god, what is that? What is this application process? What is that? So you're gonna see that there are oh four Oh my god! So you're gonna see that there are four breath. Oh It's like someone threw up thermal paste onto his processor. It literally looks like a bird of shit all over the processor. Imagine a ketchup packet slowly being ran over. He went all bukake up in that thermal paste. You had a thermal paste spreader. Use the fucking thing. What is that? Dude, I can't even make fun of this guy anymore. He's actually like messed up like almost everything. Oh, uh, if this is, if this computer posts, it'll be a freaking miracle. And they're going to keep the no, cooler raised off the processor, but it's also going to be close enough to actually physically come in contact with it. <laughs> They're going to keep the cooler off the processor, but it's going to be close enough to make physical contact. Take thumb screws like this and just screw them on. Woo! 
Ooh, The Verge. I dislike your editing style so much. He said, do it like this. And it's a wide shot. I can't even see what he's doing. So now that our internals are done, we're gonna put all the panels back on, which is the top glass, side glass, front glass, and of course the back panel where all oh, this- Oh, thank God it's done. So we fully built the- What is this? What? What is all of this? <laughs> So that cable management though. When you're building a computer, always take the time to cable manage properly. Make sure everything looks neat. You know, it, your cables are not are, are gonna affect your airflow inside your case. And he actually used his quote unquote tweezers slash what we know as zip ties, but he didn't do a very good job of actually cleaning up. And holy crap, look, there's a missing screw on his all-in-one water cooler pump. Why, you just had three and there's an extra one and you just threw it away just like your socket cover? And look at this. The tubing that goes into his all-in-one water cooler pump contacts the 1080 graphics card that he has. That's bad practice. That thing contains liquids that could potentially short out the system if it gets damaged by the heat generated by the graphics card. Now, it looks like he managed to find the right screw for the fans. Oh, good. <laughs> That's just... Awful. And we got to the post screen. No so way. What, and we got to the post screen. They got so to the post next? screen. Holy shit, it's a miracle. I'm honestly surprised he got it to post settings. at all. That's well, amazing. That's USB the biggest flat. surprise of all. He got to the post screen. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. And we got to the post screen. You know what he totally skipped too? He totally forgot to mention how to plug in the uh, power switch, reset switch, uh, front USBs, uh, front headphone jack and microphone jack. Totally skipped over the front panel IO. I really want him to open up computer manager and see if it's pulling and if it's reading all 16 gigs because he still never fixed the memory. And it's running pretty smoothly. I'm averaging 70 and 80 FPS. You're averaging 70 and 80 FPS because you're in a plane flying around. The game really only needs to detail render your plane. Everything else is like half rendered because you're going so fast. So that's how they hide it with motion blur and all that stuff. So right now I'm playing League of Legends. It's one of my favorite A bad games. benchmark game. The, the minimum requirement for League of Legends is literally a single core processor. League of Legends could run on the shittiest of laptops. It was designed that way. I'm averaging 120 FPS and that's only because I've actually locked the game to that frame rate because- He's locked the game at 120 FPS, why? Aren't we supposed to be benchmarking something? Why even bother? The reason you have it capped at 120 frames per second is because you probably are not using a monitor that is 144 Hertz. So anytime you get super high frame rates, you're probably experiencing ghosting and Yasuo showing up all over the place because your panel can't keep up with your system. And of course now we also have a computer to test and benchmark games here at The Verge. No, 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 no. You do not get the right to benchmark games or test PC components if you build PCs like that, bro. You put your PSU the wrong way. You oversaturated in thermal paste. You, you mixed two thermal pastes together. You made a rat's nest for cable management. You even missed one screw on your all-in-one water cooler. Your radiator hoses contact the 1080 graphics card. Ain't nobody gonna respect your benchmarks after this, bro. 2.1 million subscribers ain't got a freaking screwdriver. Doesn't know what a heck tweezers are versus a zip tie. Doesn't know how to mount an all-in-one water cooler. Doesn't know how to put a power supply into their case. Thinks a power supply can short circuit by contacting the metal case. All right, so long story short, this video sucks. Presented by Capital One. Capital One, you got the raw end of the deal. Oh, you gotta get your logo scraped off this thing. Holy moly. I don't know why you guys sponsored this video because, um. It's terrible. It's full of misinformation. This is easily the worst PC build I have ever seen. A lot of people are gonna screw their computer up. Very scary. Someone who built a PC for the first time might think this is a good video to follow and their PC explode. They don't know the video bad because they disable the like and dislike and the comment. So much censorship. Feel like I'm back in China. So all you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. It doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. It doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. We have a big team of tech reporters with a deep understanding of tech and how it affects the world we live in.